Welcome, I hope you're blessed in the Lord today. In this video, we want to continue to go through Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 through 18. We're up to verse 19. Now, the reason we're going through this passage is because a lot of times people are confused, uh, disciples are confused whenever they think about the issues of law and grace, faith and works. These things are often very confusing for us in our modern day. Now, in Scripture, it was not confusing. In the New Testament, as you read through it, they're able to flow between works and faith and, and law and grace very smoothly. Uh, if you read the early church, it's the same thing there. They didn't have any sort of complication over this issue. But oftentimes, because after the Reformation, after the clash between Protestants and Catholics and all the doctrines that uh, were flying in the air at that time, uh, in our day, there is a big disconnect between the faith that works through love, as Paul says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. And so we're looking at this passage because this is a passage that is often used by those in the Hebraic Roots movement to say that we should still be walking in accordance to the law of Moses. And so the question is, in the New Testament, are we under law? And the answer is most definitely we are under law. As Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9, 21, we are under the law of Christ. But 920, he says, we are not under the law of Moses. So we need to understand this passage clearly so that we don't fall into the error of the Hebraic roots movement. And this is often used uh, to bind people. If you ever have a debate or a discussion with somebody from the Hebraic roots movement, this passage will always come up because it is seems to be saying Paul, uh, it seems that Jesus is saying that we're still supposed to obey all the commands of the law of Moses. But that's not what he's saying at all, as we've been looking at uh, over the last few videos. But let's go and start in verse 17 and read up to this point. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one dot or one mark will pass from the law until all be fulfilled. So Jesus is not saying he came to teach the law of Moses or to enforce the law of Moses or to give commentary on the law of Moses, but instead he came to fulfill the law of Moses. The law of Moses, in many different ways, he fulfills it, whether it be the sacrifices, the Passover, the Sabbath, in his salvation, the work of salvation, he becomes our Sabbath, he becomes our Passover, he becomes all these things. But in another sense, the Old Testament law gave a semblance of righteousness. It gave a semblance of what the moral standards of God were. But of course, those standards were not perfect. For example, in Matthew chapter uh, 19, Jesus said, okay, Moses, because God commanded Moses, allowed you to marry or to divorce your wives, but this was not God's plan from the beginning. But it was because of the hardness of your heart that God allowed you to do it. And so we see in the Old Testament law that it's not up to the standard of morality that God, uh, uh, that God actually has. But the law of Christ, the teachings and the commands of Jesus Christ fulfill that law. And so we see here that he's not saying that he came to teach it, not saying he to, came to enforce it, but came to fulfill it. So we looked at that in the past videos. But then he says this in verse 19. Whoever, therefore, breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do likewise shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So the first thing we want to question here is what is Jesus saying? Is he saying, look, I didn't come to destroy the law and the prophets. I came to fulfill them. Therefore, you must do everything that they command. No. Because then we would be ignoring what he just said, that he came to fulfill them. That means that what he's teaching is different than the law of Moses. It's not contrary to, in fact, when we obey the law of Christ, we will fulfill the righteous standards of the Old Testament law. As it says in Romans chapter 2, verse 26, and Romans chapter 8, verse 4, that the righteous requirements of the law are fulfilled in those that walk not according to the flesh, but by the Spirit of God. So, what is he saying here? He says this, Whosoever or whoever, therefore, breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do likewise shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. So this therefore is very important. This therefore is him saying, I didn't come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. Therefore, you need to do what I command. So when it says here, uh, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments, he's not talking about the commands that were in the law. Because remember, he's talking about the law and the prophets, and he's referring back to them and saying that he fulfills them. So he's not saying, go back and obey those. No, instead he's saying, 
I fulfill them. Therefore, you need to listen to these commandments that I am giving to you in this Sermon on the Mount. This sermon and my teaching are those things which you will be judged by, which you are required to obey. So listen to it again with that in mind. Whoever, therefore, breaks one of the least of these commandments of mine, is what he's saying, and teaches others to do likewise shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven, but whoever does and teaches them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now, what, how can we say this? How can we say for sure that he's not talking about the commandments of the law, besides the fact that he came to fulfill the law, not to teach it? Because we can look elsewhere in what he continues to say. If we jump over to Matthew chapter 7, this is the conclusion. So Matthew 5 is the beginning of the sermon. Matthew chapter 7, it's the very conclusion. And here's the utter conclusion. Verse 24, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on a rock. Verse 27, uh, verse 26. And every man who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. So Jesus is saying that since he fulfills the law, therefore, we must obey all of his commands, all of his sayings, all of these commands that he's teaching in this law. If we jump over to Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 24, verse 35, we read this. Let's see, verse 35. He says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. So his words are what we are living by. Matthew chapter 28. If we jump to Matthew chapter 28, the Great Commission, what is the, the final statement of the Great Commission? It says this, starting in verse 18, then Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and earth has been given, given to me. So he has all authority in heaven and earth. He is Lord of all. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. Okay, so now let's flip back. This is all in Matthew and there's more and we'll get into that probably in the next video. But in Matthew chapter five, what he's saying here, verse 17, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one dot or one mark will pass from the law until all be fulfilled. So the Old Testament law, everything written in the law, is still useful for believers today. We can read it and understand how Jesus Christ fulfills it, both in the, the prophecies, but also in the righteousness that was contained as a semblance in the law of Moses is now fulfilled in the teaching of Christ. Verse 19, whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do likewise shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And then he's going to go and he's going to continue to speak about his commandments. He's going to say things like this. Verse 20, uh, let's see, verse 21. You have heard that it was said by the ancients, you shall not murder and whoever murders shall be in danger of judgment. But I say to you, Whoever is angry with his brother without cause shall be in danger of judgment. Verse 27, you have heard that it was said by ancients, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, whoever looks on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery. Uh, verse 31, it was said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that whoever divorces his wife except for marital unfaithfulness causes her to commit adultery. Verse 33, again, you have heard that it was said by the ancients, you shall not swear falsely, but shall fulfill your oaths to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all. So when Jesus is talking in verse 19 here, he's talking about the commandments in the context of his message, of his sermon, because his commands fulfill the Old Testament law. Therefore, anybody who uh, who doesn't obey them will be least in the kingdom of God, and those who do them will be called great in the kingdom of God. So basically what the Hebraic roots uh, teachers and followers have gotten wrong in this passage is they've misunderstood, and they thought that Jesus was referring to the letter of the law in the Old Testament, that the Bible says that because we've died to the law, we're no longer under law, but we are now risen with Jesus Christ and we live to God by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the new covenant. We're no longer under the letter of the law that was engraved on stone, but now we are filled with the spirit of God and the law of God is written in our heart. What is that law? The perfect law of liberty, which is the law of Jesus Christ, his commandments. Okay, so we need to get it very clear what he's talking about. Let's flip to Luke chapter 16. 
In Luke chapter 16, let's see here. I'm going to read something here in verse 16. He says this, Jesus speaking, The law and the prophets were preached until John. So John was the last of the Old Testament prophets. So the law and the prophets were preached until John. Since then, so since the time of Jesus Christ, his ministry beginning, since then the kingdom of God has been preached and everyone is pressing into it. So Jesus said those who do the least of these commandments shall be called least in the, or don't do them will be called least in the kingdom of God. Those that do his commandments will be called great in the kingdom of God because his message is the good news of the kingdom of God, that the kingdom of God has come through the king Jesus Christ. So we need to understand he was not coming and preaching the Old Testament law and prophets. He was fulfilling the Old Testament law and prophets. His teaching was fulfilling the righteous requirements of the law and the prophets. See that uh, if we jump over to Matthew chapter 19. Let's see here. Matthew 19 verse 16 to 24. Let's see here. 19, verse 16, 24. Okay. Now one came and said to him, good teacher, what good deed shall I do to have eternal life? So he's asking, what should I do? What are the commands I should obey? What, uh, what, what works am I supposed to do? Verse 17. He replied to him, why do you call me good? There is one who is good, but if you would enter into life, keep the commandments. So Jesus didn't say, say to him, there's nothing, you don't have to do anything, just, uh, just believe in me and then you'll go to heaven. That's not what he said. He says, if you would enter into life, keep the commandments. Then he was asked, uh, the man asked him, verse 18, he said to him, which ones? Now this is an important question and the answer is going to be very important. Is Jesus going to answer all of them? Keep all the commands of the Old Testament law. Anything that the law of Moses says about circumcision, about Sabbaths, about uh, new moons, about feast days, about eating unclean food, keep all the commandments. Is that what Jesus is going to answer? No, he's going to say this. Jesus answered, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So here he gives the moral, what we call moral kinds of commands. Commands. Now, all of these didn't come from the Ten Commandments because you shall love your neighbor as yourself is not from the uh, Ten Commandments. It's from the book of Leviticus. So we see that these are moral commands, commands about right and wrong morally, ethically. And so that was what he answered. He said, do these commands. Now, how can we fulfill these commands? You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal by obeying the law of Jesus Christ. If we obey the law of Jesus Christ, which is higher in standard, which says do not lust, so you won't ever commit adultery. Do not uh, be angry at your brother without cause and curse him. You'll never murder him if you never get to that point. And so if you keep the law of Christ, then you will fulfill all the righteous requirements, Romans chapter 2, verse 26, all the righteous requirements of the Old Testament law. But it doesn't say here that you will also keep the Sabbaths and the feasts and the moon, new moons. No, it's talking about the moral righteous standard of the Old Testament, that these are what you're to do. So when Jesus said, if you keep these commandments, you will enter into life. He's not talking about perfection. He's not saying if you keep them perfectly without fault, then you'll enter eternal life. He's not saying that if you do this, then you will earn eternal life. Uh, in the last video, we discussed the fact that uh, even in the law of Christ, that it's worked into it, that there is redemption, that there is forgiveness. We have the throne of grace we can go to. Uh, he, the law of Christ is to be obeyed, but he, there's not an expectation that we will obey it perfectly. And we can also add, that doesn't mean we earn salvation. No, Jesus earned our salvation, reconciliation to God through his blood. And now by his intercession, we stay in right standing with God. But we must continue to walk in faith, continue to walk with him. If we're walking with him in right relationship with him, then we will be living as a habit of our life. We will be living in obedience to the law of Jesus Christ. Jesus says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? So if we call him Lord and we say we believe that he is Lord, because by believing in our Lord and confessing him as Lord, we are saved. If we say that he is Lord, but we don't do what he says, then we do not truly trust that he is Lord. Now let's turn to Matthew chapter 22 and look at verse, uh, let's see here, verse 34. 22 verse 34. When the Pharisees heard that he silenced the Sadducees and came together, one of them began, who was a lawyer, tested him by asking, Teacher, 
which is the greatest commandment in the law? He said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Okay. Now, oftentimes people will say, look, you see the 10 commandments, there's two tables and they're, and they all hang on these two commandments. You know, love God is the first table and love your neighbor is the second table. Problem is, love your neighbor as yourself, again, is not in the Ten Commandments. Uh, the love of the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength is in Deuteronomy, not in the Ten Commandments. And it doesn't say all the Ten Commandments hang on these. It says uh, all the law and the prophets hang on these because his command, Jesus Christ's law, is summarized in these two commandments. If we do this and we walk according to this in the way that he prescribes in the Sermon on the Mount and elsewhere, then we will fulfill all the righteous requirements of the Old Testament. And so we need to understand that the law of Jesus Christ is different than the Old Testament law. It fulfills what was only a shadow in the Old Testament, but has now come to pass. Now going back to uh, Matthew chapter 5, let's look in closing here what we started off with. Verse 17, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one dot or one mark will pass from the law until all is fulfilled. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do likewise shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. If we are going to be great in the kingdom of heaven, and we'll talk about in the next video, God willing, what that, talk, what that means. If we're going to be great in the kingdom of heaven, we must obey the commands of Jesus Christ. If we ignore them, then we are building our house on sand. If we obey them, we are building our house on the rock. I hope this has been helpful to you. God bless.